Welcome to the Football Social. It is the full-time Devils takeover. It's Thursday, 6 o'clock, which means we speak Manchester United for an hour. And I'm joined by two legends in the studio who will be joining me till 7 o'clock. It is Jay and Webby. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Are you okay? Yeah, good. Good yeah. to be yeah. back. Good evening, good evening Joe. Good evening. Uh, lots to talk about today. The fallout from PSG, uh, the, the what's coming up in the Manchester United calendar and all things that you want to have a say on. It's just about you tonight as much as about us in the studio. Get your calls in nice and early so we make sure we have a chat to you. We're only here for an hour. So, 0345 one 7625 Come and have your say with this, uh, these gentlemen in the studio and we can get to any talking points you want to talk about as long as it's about Manchester United. Uh, we're going to start today with some sad news, aren't we, Webby? Uh, Eric Harrison, uh, the legend coach for Manchester United, and you've managed to get someone, especially on the phone, for us to have a chat with. Yeah, a sad day. Everyone connected with the club. We know what job he did. Uh, unbelievable job. Brought some great players through and we're, we're quite lucky to have a good friend of mine on the phone and member of the class of 92, Ben Farnley. Good evening, Ben. Good evening, guys. How are you doing? Hi, Ben. Ben, ben there's, there's quite a lot of people, because obviously we're on the podcast and we're watching through YouTube, who might not understand the importance of Eric Harrison. So if you were going to tell a young United fan in, you know, why was he so important to the club, uh, how would you do it? Well, first and foremost, he was old school, Eric, um, as was as was Sir Alex Ferguson, and that's why they, they worked in conjunction with other with with each other to to uh, to you know get the youth development going at Old Trafford when when Sir Alex arrived, and he was lucky to have, and, and he, he went on record today as saying that uh, Eric Harrison already there. Um, and and they both, you know, instantly recognised talent. There's no question. But the one thing that Eric required from everybody was hard work, and the talent would come through. Um, and he he instilled that in in everybody that worked under him. There were players, you know, before the class of '92, which I know he's going to be, you know, most fondly remembered for. But players like David Platt, Mark Hughes, Norman Whiteside, and then subsequently after we we'd gone through with likes of Phil Neville and Wes Brown and Darren Fletcher, when every Every single one of them will tell you um, they, they had the utmost respect and admiration for, for the way that he went about treating the players and getting the best out of them. And, and it was a it was a grounding, not just for football, but for life and, and, and also for, for going up to, to join Sir Alex Ferguson in his first team squad because he had exactly the same values. I can imagine so, uh, the kind of man he was. He, was he made sure he got the best out of every player then, do you think, Ben? He did, he did. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he used to identify who he was going to give a rollicking to during the week at the weekend's games and it was just a, 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 a question for you to to, um, to, to get your, 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 mental, your mentality right, um, how you would deal with it because he, he, had, um, he had a way about him where he demanded that everybody gave 100% um, and if you didn't do that then you would incur his wrath straight away but he was a he was a, a fabulous man as well as a, a great coach and and we, it was always somebody that we could turn to if uh, if things weren't going quite so well and he'd know exactly what to say to you um, in order to give you the confidence and the belief to get back out there and 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 be the player that he he recognised that you could be. Did it teach you much about you know obviously what's on the pitch? But have you brought stuff Ben through your life that you know he, Eric will always have that sort of impact in the way you are as a person, not just on the pitch but off the pitch absolutely absolutely um, none of us are, are, are players anymore um, we're all going to be judged on our on our personal ability um, and under his tutelage along with Sir Alex Ferguson you know he, he gave us the you know the pathway to succeed in life as a person uh, because obviously your footballing days only last so long uh, and then you need to be judged on, on, on the type of person that you are and, uh, and having him um, as our, our mentor and our teacher from such an early age has helped us greatly with that and we'll always be indebted to him. Uh, hi Ben, it's Jay here. I just wanted to ask you what one of your fondest memories of, of Eric was. Oh, I tell you what, I mean, uh, Webby will probably tell you as well, he, 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 he used to come out with some absolute pearlers on a, on a football field. Uh, you know, the famous playing at the cliff and you used to get the bangs on the window. Um, and every single one of the players will tell you something that he's, he's had a go at them about and, and some of the famous phrases that he's used. But the one thing that sticks in my mind is the, is the very first day when we got to the cliff 
um, and we're all, you know, waiting with eager anticipation to set about our Manchester United careers and we're sitting in the Cliff dressing room and uh, we're all getting our boots out on the floor and Eric Harrison comes downstairs and the first thing he says is, you won't be needing them. It's <laughs> 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 pre- pre-season and all you do is run and, and straight away we're like, oh, this is our Manchester United career beginning and uh, and he's taking no nonsense. But I, I mean, I, I would never have had anybody else in charge of us and, and like I said, he, he was just a magnificent guy who, who we, we owe such a lot to and it's a very sad day. Ben, ben I'll be, it's Webby. I'll quit one for you. I've seen a quote uh, from Phil Neville this morning. It just summed the man up. Uh, he was playing for Everton and he, he turned his back on his shot and he got into the changing rooms and there was a text message on his phone. Phil, ring me Monday morning at 8 o'clock. So he rang him and he said he had a right going for turning his back. So he was 31 years of age. <laughs> so that's what the man was like. He studied and he loved his football and he was great for our club. And then you look at towards the end of his, his footballing careers, usually brought him on board with Wales, you know, because he knew he was that yeah. good. And it'd be sadly missed, not just by you and the boys and all that, by everyone connected with the club and rest in peace. Definitely. Yeah, the fo- the football fraternity that, that yeah. you know that that, that knew him and, and knew what sort of an impact he had. Um, I, I'm going to miss him greatly. And then if if we only had um, coaches and, and people like him in the game to nurture young talent, then I reckon the, the, the game would be all the better for it in this country. Ben, thank ben, you very much for you well, giving your time Cheers. to full time Devils. You'll Cheers. be welcome, guys. Take care. Bye Cheers, man. Have a good night. Cheers, ben Foley there having a chat with us about Eric Harrison. Leave your comments in the comments section and we'll get to them soon uh, we're going to speak more about the, the matters in hand uh, last uh, Tuesday's game yeah. the fallout from that uh, so why don't you get your call in 0345 treble 1 7625 get your calls in nice and early and we'll have a chat with you about that because I'm sure there's a lot of things to talk about Webby's fuming absolutely fuming so come and join in with the conversation um, we'll, we'll just talk about Tuesday then shall we Jay <laughs> yeah do we have to yeah we got to <laughs> Yeah, Tuesday night. I'll, I'll be honest with you, and this is you know this isn't going down too well, but I'm not as deflated as a lot of people are. Tune at home to PSG losing Paul Pogba. You look at that as a bit of a disaster, but I think we have to have to have a bit of perspective. We have to have a bit of perspective into uh, into where we've come. I think we all got excited and rightly so under Ollie's revolution. And before the game, I was chatting to a lot of people. Chatting to a lot of people who are usually quite pessimistic, and everyone thought we were going to win at least. I win think the- that was a bad thing. Everyone, did everyone, think everyone. I was confident. talking to the lads who just are all doom and gloom merchants, and they were like, "I, f- I fancy us tonight. Yeah, we'll, we'll do did. these." The, you know, the missing Cavani, the missing Neymar. The only problem was they had like the likes of Mbappe to come in, <laughs> and uh, and obviously Di Maria, we know only too well. And I think it's easy to look at it and think, "Oh, it's terrible. Two 0 down. The game's over." And admittedly, it's going to be highly unlikely that we go through, but. I think it just shows how how far we've come. The fact that we're so positive going into a game like that, when a few months ago, you know, we couldn't even beat Southampton, or we didn't even fancy games against Crystal Palace. So there is a bit of positivity, and it's just a bit of perspective of how far we've got to go. Because all these words miracles, but he can't do it all. He, you know, he, he does. We do need investment. We do need strengthening. <coughs> and I think once Lingard and Martial went off, it showed. PSG lose a couple of players they bring in yeah. some quality yeah. we lose a couple of players and we bring in we, we bring in players who despite the facts we all know my love for Juan Mata Sanchez was a star at Arsenal <laughs> Lukaku was a you know a massive signing you look at them three and you worry you wonder if they've still got a United career to be honest with you and it pains me to say that especially about Mata but I think that was the big difference is the, the, the lack of squad depth that we've got compared to PSG do Sanchez, do Mata and do Lukaku still have a United career? In the comment sections, please give us a call 0345 treble 17625. Did them three deserve their uh, shirt uh, as a Manchester United player? Uh, Webby, you can get onto that subject, but your thoughts yeah. on PSG? Yeah, you got to look at it. I was, what Jay was saying, I was upbeat before the game, but it proved, you know, how good a team they had. And like Jay Spawn, all these top-notch teams, it... You have one player go out, they have someone the same quality to come in. Unfortunately, we don't have that, you know. And I said, if we want to dine at the top table of English and European football, we're five or six players short, you know, to challenge these teams, you know what I mean? Because you know, I watched PSG the other week and they won 9 0. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, how bad is this Is this French league? And they've gone out the last. That's the thing, though, that you think you just dismiss it. No, it's the yeah. French league, terrible. But, but, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're still we're, doing. We're talking about uh, <laughs> players we've seen at Old Trafford. How good was a young kid? up front for them yeah, he's, he's, got, he's the fastest player I've ever I, seen I, 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 I thought he was old I couldn't even keep me, <laughs> never mind running with him I couldn't keep up with him with my yeah, eyes yeah, so I was no, like where's he gone we're going to go amazing. some callers first yeah, about PSG yeah, yeah. Alan 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 
How are you? Sorry, man, I've got it all mixed up there. I'm very good, man. You're our first caller on today's takeover. Uh, what do you want to I'm talk about? It. First of all, I just wanted to say uh, rest in peace, Eric Harrison. I know he was yeah. a massive figure for the club, and he, our our youth academy wouldn't be what it is in the modern year without him. Correct. Fergie was well, essential, sorry. but Eric Harrison was absolutely. And I know I'm American, but he actually did produce one of my my hometown boys, Jovan Kurovsky from LA Galaxy. So, so massive go. thank you. There Obviously, you all the other legends. But uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of talk about like this in between time now between PSG and Chelsea. Um, I I feel like we we may be down at the moment, but we're we're certainly not out in terms of the whole season. You know, like that was that was a tough game, um, but. With, if it was Mourinho in charge, I would have been terrified for that game. But go every, I feel like I can say for everybody, everyone felt good going into that game because of the way we're playing. And we can be proud like that we went out with with a fight and, and everything. And, uh, and also, like, going to the Chelsea game, this is another great opportunity for us to kind of bounce back and get the, get the run going again. Uh, I wanted to know, like, your guys' thoughts, though, on the club giving the extensions to Phil Jones and Ashley Young and uh, Chris Smalling. Because in my opinion, like, we need a massive overhaul, and these guys should have been at the top of the list to go in the summer. Uh, you spoke, uh, you spoke about that, Webby, didn't that. you? Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I shall pass this to you. Go on, Jay. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know my right. thought, you know my thoughts on a couple of them, but Jay, Did, the right, you. Well, for starters, the Ashley Young thing, we've been over this. Yes. I, I, rate, I like Ashley Young. I think squad player, he's a leader. Listen, we can laugh and we can say he's not up to standard, but I've said this a million times. He's a leader on the pitch. He's one of the few that's got a voice in, on him yeah. when you watch him play. He's experienced. He, he brings a lot of experience to the team that you need. You need someone like that. He's just come back from the World Cup where he was a valuable member of the team and got to the semis. Yeah, okay, I get it. He's getting on in years and he's not the sort of the quick attacking fullback that a lot of modern teams want. But he does a job and I've said this times before and Joel's laughed at me. If you saw Ashley Young for Fabian Delph in that City team last season, they'd still finish with 100 points. He's not the issue. Ashley Young isn't the problem at United. Now, when he goes on to players like Smalling and Jones, I've said it before, give them time. They've only had eight years. Give them, give them time. There's potential there. They've only got 500 appearances between them. <laughs> give them a bit of time, a bit of patience and by this time in a few years we'll be saying they've come good. No, seriously, I, I don't think Jones is up to it. I do think Smalling's up to it. So I'm happy for Smalling and Jones to stay. Uh, Smalling and Young to stay. Jones, I just don't think he's got it in him. I just think with Jones, I think like you can't count on him, like, Jay. You no, know, he, he'll no. play a game, he'll play a good game, and then he'll go missing for free, he'll be out injured. I look no. at the Huddersfield game last year. For me, he didn't fancy it, thinking, and I put a tweet out or someone said, I'll see you after Christmas. He was back next week. So that's telling me he didn't fancy that cold rain in Huddersfield. <laughs> he did, he did, he did. You know, and he's always a big mistake in, i.e., the FA Cup final last year. You know, so, but yeah. when he play, he does a job, but he's not. It's, for the, those trouble, he's it's, the, it's the nature of his mistakes with Jones. The big mistakes. The big mistakes. Like, they just, yeah, the big ones, and he often looks comical, and it doesn't help him, especially in this day and age where everything becomes a meme. Yeah, he's exactly. just. Right, well, like you you make it become a meme. <laughs> right, Alan, Ellen, thank you very much for giving us a call. Russell, you're on the line now. Russell, you got a positive look on uh, the Champions League, don't you? Well, yeah, man, I do. How are you guys? Yeah, very Hi, good, Russell. Russell. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, good. I mean, uh, first of all, I would like to say rest in peace to Eric. I mean, uh, it wouldn't be right if I didn't start off that way. And uh, I think uh -huh. maybe we didn't well said. appreciate him more. Actually, we should have mentioned his name and uh, tried to follow up on how he was a bit more. But anyways, yeah, rest in peace, Eric. And uh, I don't know, I, I have a more positive look to it because uh, everyone has written us out already. You know, and uh, people were saying, oh, Ole has brought Man United back. And what's Man United about if it's not about comebacks? Oh, the comeback. No. You think you Russell will come like back, come back on. style. If hey. we go to Paris and we win? I think we go to Paris and we get through to, to the last, uh, to the last, uh, the last eight? Yeah, last yeah, eight. Yeah, quarterfinals. Yeah. It's good enough for me. Big I call, mean, I mean, big right. call there for so Russell. If anyone else believes Man United can still get I, through I to the quarterfinals. Steve Davis on one wing. <laughs> and Ray Raiden on the other you know let's have it right no let's have it right they've got players to come back in uh, obviously we will miss Paul for the second leg but and on that I'd love no, nothing much United to win over there but uh, let's have it right uh, uh, what what are you on about Steve Davis and Ray Raiden we'll need snooker <laughs> uh, right we've got we got a czar on the line how you doing man I'm fine thanks how are you everyone very very good, good what do you want to speak about today mate I want to go back on the uh, 
uh, contract extensions and stuff like that. But first, uh, rest in peace, Eric. He's yes. the important part. Of well, the system. Yes, yeah, so, uh, back to what I was saying. With the contract extensions, Phil Jones, Ashley Young, Chris Morling, and even Maran Fellaini a few months ago before he got kicked out. It's just, it's a terrible, terrible idea for the from the board's part. I don't put any of the blame on Oli because it makes much more business decision to Ed Woodward and Fraser to add 10K onto Phil Jones and Ashley Young contracts and spend 100 million on Kulabai and another right back. It just keeps the value, doesn't it? We get them signed, uh, you know. Is, is, it keeps uh, that uh, value. Uh, is, yeah, I mean... What value? I couldn't tell you, but it keeps a value. But there's still there's still room for manoeuvre here, isn't there? We could still see someone like Marcus Rojo, for example, go out. We could still see another defender come in. Yeah. Probably two defenders come in. I don't think that this means that's it in terms of our defensive options. Would you like to say, I, I think another defender will come in. Do you not think that yeah. still happens, Ar? What do you think is that? It says here on you something about Ashley Cole. Is that true? What? Ashley, Ashley Cole. No, I think it was Ashley Young. Oh, right. Well, someone Ashley on the Young notes is, team's is, getting is. fired. Uh, right, sorry, Ezab. <laughs> sorry, this is Ashley Cole here, but I thought you might want to be bringing Ashley Cole back. But Ashley Young. <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah, well, yeah. Nah, I'd rather uh, go I, 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 Wait till the break. <laughs> <laughs> Carl and Cole. Yeah. Wait till the break. Notes team are getting their heads uh, oh, bubbled. Dear. Right. Let's put the cat amongst the pigeons there. <laughs> really? Hey. Azar, uh, uh, thank you very much for your call. Do you think, like Russell, yep. they get the ties over, or could we still be in it? It's definitely possible. We, like uh, where we said, we're out Paul, without Paul Pogba, which is very disappointing. But I think it'll have to be some sort of tactical masterclass from Oli or Nick Field and the coach and uh, the coaching staff because I don't think tactics were on point on Tuesday night. I think we didn't exploit the left hand side as we should have. Yeah, and they he, got the tactics. Oh, he stopped him playing. Out. I don't know if you have managed to see that interview. What Wenger did? He got he was spot on. The, now, first, the one in the first half where he called it, didn't he? And, you know, people yeah. went on against thinking that he was starting to lose it at Arsenal, but I'll tell you what, he was back to the old... He got it spot on and he was right. The tactics, what PSG did. And fair play. Got on, we got uh, beat by the better team. Got on Pogba, Pogba didn't he, straight away. Mark, is. is it Marquinhos right. on Pogba? Yes. Final right. caller of this section. We've got Dan on the line. How you doing, Dan? Hi, all right. Hi, Dan. Yeah, right. good, Dan. Uh, Dan, what do you want to speak about? Uh, I was just going to talk about um, the, the game uh, the other night. Um, just it's probably a slightly unpopular opinion in some ways, but um, I just think a lot of people talking about the defence uh, all the time. But when you add up the amount of goals that the forward players have actually got between them, it, it isn't great. Uh, we kind of lack um, a proven quality goal scorer up front. I mean, we're playing against PSG the other night. And, you know, Rashford, he could be the best thing in the world in years to come. But as it stands, you're talking about a player who hasn't scored more than 15 goals in a season. And, and this is what we're, we're pinning our hopes on. And I, I just think that uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of emphasis on the defence and how poor, you know, people like Ashley Young are, or at least some people. Dan, Dan so. you spot on there, mate. I made the point the other week. I'd love us to have a natural goal scorer at the club, you know, so did they have to find Van Nistelrooy comes to mind, you know, yeah, that predator around yeah. the six yard box, might not, it, it hurts me to say, they see him rushing his day, he's doing out for 89 minutes, and he, he banged to him for, for, the, for that mob, but if we could find one, we've yeah. got one there, Greenwood, whether he gets his chance, yeah, yeah, season, I, I, know, I get, I get, I'd what, play him at Chelsea, I get what you guys are saying now, but, you? You play but at Chelsea? I play him at Chelsea, yeah. Greenwood? Play him at Chelsea. I don't know, but that's a bit of a baptism I've of fire. I it straight in at Stamford Bridge. You know? Jay, Jay, the one thing they struggle, you've seen it against Quarter Stockport panel. on Sunday. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Pace. <laughs> Chelsea, I've seen <laughs> Stockport. Milton <laughs> turned quick off. Yeah, but, but Marcus I'd Rashford's got pace in abundance, hasn't he? That's, but he's not an... Who, Marcus Welbeck? Yeah, no, I'm going to admit, right, I'm not having this for starters, right? I'm having a laugh with you. No, yeah. I'm just saying to you, all I'm saying to you is That's a compliment, finisher. I love Danny Welbeck. And he's a natural finisher, <laughs> got a but I'd have him on the bench, mate. Yeah, I'd have him on right. the bench I'm on the bench, yeah, I'm with you. Going back to the last point, I get what you're saying about Marcus Rashford, but I think a few seasons ago, people were saying this about, and it pays me to say it, that mob down the road, but about Mo Salah. He wasn't quite banging in prolifically. He was sort of there or thereabouts. And I think once you get to that sort of 22, 23, yeah. you kick on a little bit. And we've seen it with Rashford. He's progressing. And I oh, think yeah, the yeah. potential's there. Plus, he's, I've, I've seen Marcus Rashford at right back for United under Van Aert. I've seen him played all <laughs> over the pitch mm. and give been him that, tracking back that after games. Yeah. Um, if you stick him up front like um, Oli has and say, that's your position, stay there. We've already started to see that that's coming to bear and fr uh, fruits. So I think if you st stick him up front, stick with that idea, don't keep chopping and changing it, we will see more goals from him. Whether yeah. he'll be prolific, 
Is he going to be a Reed Van Nistel and Andy Cole? I don't know, no. but I think potentially could be. Imagine us finding one of them now. Oh, the joy. I imagine how much... Million. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Dan um, from... Uh, Dan, what. thank you very much Dan for giving man, us a call. You. Dan well from done, Blackburn. Dan. Uh, right, today on the show, we're obviously going to be talking about uh, the depths in our squad. Uh, Webby's got a bit of a rant to go on as well, so stay tuned for that. It's all about your calls as well, though. 0345 treble one seven six two five, And obviously, it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> We want you to write a love letter to your favourite ever Manchester United player, whoever that might be. Get in the comments <laughs> section now. Text us 877 Jay, looking into my eyes, then. Hey, hey, yeah, right yeah. On to Webber. You've got to take him out first. <laughs> uh, get in the comments hey. section. Your favourite ever United player. Write them a little. Roses are red, violets are blue. Kind of a poem. And we're wow, going to read okay, the best yeah. ones out. 877 on text. Already. you got a belt already. Oh, yeah. Also, get into our comment section as well on YouTube. Uh, we are here till 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, and we'll be right back after this. Manchester United Football Social with Full Time Devils. Welcome back to the full-time Devils takeover of the Manchester Football Social. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, in part one, we paid our respects to Eric Harrison. You can still do that. 877 on text. You can also comment in the YouTube video that is streaming live on full-time Devils. I'm joined by Jay and Webby in the studio, who will be with me for another half an hour as we get through your calls on all things PSG, on all things Manchester United, on all things squad width, etc., etc. This is your show. You write the script. Uh, we have got a little bit of a rant now yes. from Sir Webby of Webby. Um, he came into the studio before and we have a little uh, office prep and he was fuming. Fuming. So I tell you what, I'm just going to let you take the lead here, Webby. Right, yeah, two points, Jay. He's, he's really got to me a day. Well, it got to me on Tuesday night, uh, obviously putting the away fans where he was in front of the disabled end, you know, speaking to a few people who go in there with the, with the young children, leaving just after the half time, absolutely petrified. Now, we've made that decision. You know, we know what these Paddy's fans are like, the, the lunatics. <laughs> End of story, you know. So, yeah. to put them there in front of these people who, who are disabled, who love got to watch United, and now who might be afraid to come to the next European match, you know, they look for, they look forward to this more than anything, you know, being able to get out and watch their team. They're not fortunate enough like us, you know, and then to where that they were crying, they've left it just after the second half, you know, and some of them might not be coming back. I just thought whoever made that decision was an, is an absolute disgrace at the club by putting them there. And the second rant is the two clowns this afternoon. Burton Erna, <laughs> you know. At, do you know what? I remember when Manchester United Football Club was up for challenging for titles, pushing it neck and neck, squeaky bum time, European Cups, trebles, doubles. And these two clowns are going on about a football app with number one. If people don't and, know what they're saying, what, what was it Well, today? it was R Richard Arnold and my, my best mate, Ed. Yeah. I've actually gone uh, investors call and told everyone, but hey, we've got the number one app football app you know we, we should be challenging for European Cups and Premier League and we've sold out all our trainers call the police <laughs> you know I'm sick to death don't get me wrong these two people are great at the job of signing sponsorship deals the Glazers love him they're bringing all this dough in but stay away from the football side you know unbelievable and it's come out what we've paid Marino his staff 19.6 million but for them to come out and say we've got the best football app not we, we, we were challenging next year Tuesday was a proof in the pudding how far we are behind teams like PSG, you know, and then all he's bothered about is football up and trainers. I rest my case. Uh, Sam Smyers listening. Evening, lads. A bit under the weather. We can bounce back at Chelsea. Uh, and lovely to have you listening, Sam Rapp, because yeah, some callers we need to get through. Yeah. Abdullah is on the line. Hello, mate. You okay? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you guys Abdullah. doing? Right very you? well. Good? Very well. You want to talk about the PSG game? Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, that game was a big game for us, the build-up and everything. We were smashing teams, everyone who came in front of us, those dead Arsenal team and Tottenham, we smashed them. But when we met PSG, I just think there's one flaw in his last, like his, his, his style of play, Oli, and maybe even Fergie's style of play, which is a bit outdated from before. The possession style, like, when we're winning... If you watch all our games, we don't really hold the ball anymore. It's just more like we just go back to that whole all behind the back, ball, like two banks of four behind the ball. We're trying to um, make sure that they don't attack us or anything like that. But one of the best forms of defence is possession. And that's what PSG did to us. And they got us sadly with the possession. I think we were a man short in midfield that Marconios did a fantastic job on Pogba. He just took him out. So we had two midfielders. I thought we should have bring on Fred, make it a 4-4-2 diamond, play Lukaku up front with Rashford. You know what I mean? I just, that's just my thoughts. I thought that 
that maybe Oli, Oli is a learning curve for him. He could have been a bit more uh, wise about that. In Europe, you have to hold the ball for long periods of the game. You can't give away possession easily. And, and I think we were just giving away possession like it was a joke, to be honest with you. Abdullah, do you see any uh, anything that Oli can learn into the next game? Any hope that this isn't the end of the Champions League run for United? Or should we just sort of you know brush ourselves I'll down, focus honest, on the I'll... FA Cup and the Premier League? Nah, I'll be honest with you, yeah, we're Man United. When we go to Paris, we just need to go there, put Rashford up front, put a, go, put, put a long ball in behind, get an early one, they'll be shaking. They're not a big club, they've never been in this experience, they don't get past the quarters. We're Man United, they want to be us. They spent all these millions and these Arabs came in and spent all this money, they want to be Man United. So we need to show them when we get there, just go an early goal, whatever happens, happens from there. But I think they'll be shaking in their boots, they got no variety next game as well, who was fantastic. Um, in Old Trafford and Dim Dimaria was amazing even though he's a little skinny rat and I hate him say what you say he's not holding back is he's not holding back he's not Abdullah Mink call mate thank yeah. you very much well, for giving me your time for it, I, yeah we have a little button here right Zidane's on the line as well mate you want to speak uh, about uh, academy players um, yeah so you alright guys uh, yeah, very well okay. mate how are you <laughs> yeah I'm good I, yeah yeah good um, so yeah, basically, I was just thinking like if we had um, like a B team in the lower leagues, like how Barcelona, Bayern, Real Madrid do, I think we'd do a lot more better. Um, and I know this idea has been put forward to like the football league in the past, and obviously the football league has turned it down. But I think if say like we offered to make like a like a fixed yearly membership payment of say ten million, I think they'd, they'd be more willing to accept it, and I think it'd be sort of better for the national team. It'd be better for United as well. I think certain managers over the years they've just been trying to force a player into the squad just to keep that run going of having um, a youth product in every single match day squad. I think certain times it's just been forced just to like try and keep that run going. They don't want to be the manager who stops it. But I think if we had a B team in the lower leagues, I think it would produce a lot more talent. It'd come through with a better mentality and they'd develop a lot more better. What do you think about a B team, Webby? I don't know really. I think you look at the reserves. I remember years ago, obviously, there was no age limit now and it's classed as under 23s. And I remember years ago, the reserves were for players coming back from injury, yeah. you know, and you had the, the, the Central League on a Saturday morning, you know. And for me, it's, it's an hard one because if you look at United now, they're in the second division of the reserve football, which is a joke, you know, they should be up there. I think, the top, yeah. but, and they went all last season, they didn't have one recognised centre forward playing there I, think, I just think mm, that I don't I, know about this reserve I, I, get, I get where he's coming from I yeah. think the problem is you've got sort of two choices you, with a young player or with a, a fringe player well obviously a youngster you either send them out on loan or you keep them now yes. we've seen players go out on loan the likes of Tuan Zabie, for example who's, who's Sean and he's done really well but once you send that player out on loan do you trust him you give him for the end of the season that you're out on loan so you can't come back whereas if you keep him in the squad say for example I don't know a, a Gomez or whatever and they're not getting as many games, then is it a bit of a waste if they're only playing in the academy? So sometimes you get sort of caught in between two. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that is a, a good idea at a B team. I don't really care whether it, what it does for the national team, I'm being honest. But in terms of United, that could help us because sometimes you do get caught in between sort of two minds. Yeah. Do you send them out on loan or do you keep them? And send them out on loan, then you might want him. And if you keep them, then they might not be getting the top level games that you want them to get, or the, the tough games it's that you get. One, you yeah, look, you look at Chelsea, and they've got something like 50 odd players out on loan. It's a disgrace that. Yeah. Don't get yeah. me started on that. They won the FA Youth Cup about seven years on the, on the trot or yeah. something, and none of them players have ever got near the first team. Yeah. They just bring them in and, and ship them out. And City aren't, City aren't far behind them in that respect. Yeah. We have all this garbage about they've got this wonderful academy and all the rest of it. What's it done for the first team? Nothing. And, you know, the lad mentioned there that we've kept this run going, but that, that run's gone on merit. Yes. Marcus Rashford mm. Jesse Lingard deserve to be in the squad they're not there because of sentimentality yeah. they're in that they're squad because doing, they've been doing well because, and we've always had these long term players like Rashford could be in the squad for the next 10 years right. we had Wes Brown we had Ryan Giggs we had Scholes that's why that run's gone on for so long because we've always had one or two players who've been in the squad through the academy yeah. for, for years I mean technically you can say Pogba's from the academy can't yeah, you so exactly. I think it's been it, an for a couple of years exactly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I think it's um, I, I don't think that's held us back at all Zidam, thank you very much for your call. Let's get Slim on the line. Hello, Slim, you okay? Hi, Slim. Yeah, how you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, yeah good, mate. Slim. Very, very well, mate. You want to speak about the PSG game? Yeah, man. I mean, look, uh, I've come from Birmingham, and uh, I'm not a season ticket holder, so whenever I go to these games, it costs me a lot of money. Me and my uncle, we paid 300, 
hundred or fifty quid each for, for that ticket, man. And uh, you know, I don't mind like losing. Like, I mean, I do mind losing. Obviously, I want us to win, but if we were gonna lose, I would have preferred to at least have seen Neymar and Cavani, you know. Yeah, yeah, you, you rather lose by seeing a big name. Three hundred fifty quid, man, and you got to travel down from Birmingham as well. That's outrageous, isn't it? Yeah, you know what? I did it. I did it last year as well for the Seville game. Oh. Uh, we didn't pay anywhere near as much, but I'm just, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's very disappointing because, like, you know, when you go to these games, right? I, I wanted to go to the Juventus game as well, and that was going to set me back about like three hundred quid. Now I don't mind going to that, but because Mourinho was playing such poor football, I thought let's leave it. Um, and I'm glad I did. But now with this one, we, we all got like a bit of a false sense, didn't we? That, you know, we thought we could do something and everybody was injured. But I mean, I, you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful to Man United, but we just got shown the levels, didn't we? Yeah, we, I, can, I can agree with you. Slim, if you could get back to another phone line, which is very sort of background noise, can't really hear what you're saying, and we'd love to get you on and get your point. So if you can get somewhere, uh, I don't know, if you're driving park up, give us a call uh, and we'll keep an eye out for your number. We'll get you on uh, back end of the show uh, just because the, the drivers, we couldn't really hear too much for them. But I mean, to, it's just one of those things, isn't it? We'll probably leave on PSG here. Yeah. Um, but looking into the to the next game against PSG, it's a difficult one to see what Oli can do, can do uh, differently to, to, to win. Do you, do you, I mean, do you think it, in a way, this is going to sound crackers. Here we go. With me. Strap yourselves in. <laughs> right, in Jay, a way. Jay crack it, Crackers yeah. line. Jay, this Jay, is Jay, one way people are going to flip this up and you're going to play it to me in 10 years to ram it down my throat. In a way, it could almost help Oli that he's not relying on Paul Pogba because Pogba was stifled in the first leg yes. and it, it it threw a proper spanner in the works because he's so integral to our play right now Paul Pogba he's easily our most important player everything goes for him Mark Rinos was doing a job on him Pogba wasn't happy the early booking didn't help the referee I thought was shocking oh. by the way don't let, let's don't another, let me don't let me start on that <laughs> but do you think now that Oli's got to think of something else because he can't rely on Paul Pogba yeah. in a way that could help us in a way, yeah, I mean, it's not the craziest thing. I know, I know. People are going to go, oh, Pogba's United. our best player, you're an idiot. But I'm just thinking because it, once Pogba was stifled, we were in trouble. Yeah. And then we lost Lingard and Martial. It was almost game over. Whereas now we haven't got Pogba. You've got to think of something else. Okay, let's try something different. Spot on, Jay. Right, right, I'll spot, settle mate, for that. I thought I was going to get absolutely... You're right. Dude, off. No, you two, then. <laughs> you, you're right what they said. <laughs> they, they, they've signalled out our day. You only done yeah. a job and no, you, can't, you can't credit, fault him. Credit you know. for his, uh, his um, You can't tactics, fault him. The, it's just one of the things. We was all geared up. We, we was all confident going into the ground. But unfortunately, we got beat by the better team. So we dust ourselves down and we move on to Chelsea. Exactly. Uh, when, well when we were obviously the back, back was against the wall, 2-0 down, just lastly on this, uh, and we brought Lukaku on, it didn't seem like he was the, the man to really turn things around for us. And willing him to do something, willing him to get all that ball, lead it like the man he is, the built man he is, who should be just terrorising defences and be scared when he came on. But like Steve said on Steve said on yesterday's show, is the defender had more energy than Lukaku and the defender was on for 80 minutes I, of the game. I wouldn't say that. I think that at 2-0 they just closed the game down. I'm not being funny as well. You know when Lukaku came on, it was like a mass exodus. Everyone, st- everyone around me just got up and left. Really? Oh, I, don't, I don't know if that was like, oh, you know, United just the game, whole, round, you know, game round, over now, round, give up, it's over, let's go on. Yeah, made it yeah. the same. And know. I thought, crikey, is like, there was a fire drill, which I hope he didn't pick up on because he's not going to do his confidence any good. Uh, I thought as, he did well at Fulham, no? Yeah, I, I just think, he, I've, I've said it and I've said it. stay positive, his, his confidence is gone yeah. for me. He doesn't want the ball. I genuinely think that. I think he's just scared of the you ball. You think, obviously, in I don't the think he's lazy. Just, yeah, I do. I think... I've said it week in, week out when I've been on here. I don't think it's about the fact that he's lazy as some people claiming or overweight. I just think he's lost his confidence and I actually think he's in a position where he's scared of the football. Mm. He's scared of it. And I think in a perverse way, the better United are playing, the worse it's making him looking. You've got Pog- uh, Pogba and Martial and Lingard who have got amazing touches and scoring these wonderful goals and Martial and then you've got him coming on and he, his touch lets him down and it's just, you can feel it. You can feel it in the grounds. Yes. The crowd are on him and he's, he's, he's shrinking. Yeah. Mm. We're going to be chatting about uh, a legend of the club, uh, Mickey T, after the break. Uh, And we're also going to be getting your phone calls about the future of Manchester United. We're also... Do you want want mine now? We're asking for your poems. Poems? I've got one already for you, Joe. It's the love poems. Yeah. Webby, take the lead. Roses are red. Yeah, go on. Violets are blue. Yeah. Stephen Gerrard's won the Champions League, but yeah. Wesley Brown has two. Oh, well, well said. Wonderful. Well, well, well said. Well, well said. Have you got some smarts in front of you there? 
Who is listening, Webby? No? Uh, Jay, Jay, I did. I'll do, I'll do. Roses are red, violets are blue. We've won 20, City, just a few. Well, hey, hey, there you go. Hey, get your United you love poems like in. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. Get your United love poems in. Right, uh, we'll I've, be reading I've them out by one. the end of the show. Right. We're Jay, saving you yours one. to last. Right, okay. Because you're, I know good you are at poems uh, 625 come and give us a call we want one for about another 20 minutes have your say uh, and be involved in the full time devil's takeover Manchester United Manchester United football social with full time devils Welcome back to the final part of the Full Time Devils Takeover. My name is Joe McGraw and I am with Webby and Jay for the next 10 minutes taking your calls on all things Manchester United. We're going to be previewing the Chelsea game. It's the next game uh, Manchester United have to face and what it could mean with a couple of players that are out or how we're going to shape up against uh, Chelsea uh, considering we've got some really big games coming up. If you want to have your say, by the way, you've got about 10 minutes to do so. 0345 treble one seven six two five. Come and get involved in the conversation and have a chat with us, uh, Jay and Webby, with us the next ten minutes. I uh, want to speak uh, about uh, a legend in Manchester United's history, Eric Harrison, as well. We 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 did a, a lovely chat about him at the start of the show. If you've just caught us, get the podcast or yeah. go back and watch the live um, footage on YouTube. Uh, but there is another uh, gentleman we need to talk about, and that is uh, Mickey Thomas, yeah. uh, who uh, you know we've I know and you know Webby, and yeah. we just he's one of the kindest men. Um, about in football, yeah. he'll look after you. He'll take care of you. Yeah. He'll make sure you feel like uh, just just he'll make you feel like you're his best friend when you're having yeah. a chat with him. Uh, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer in January 2019 uh, this year. So he started his treatment. I think it was Monday. the beginning of Monday. this week. Yeah, Monday. But on Twitter, that he started his treatment. There was stories about that. You know, he has been diagnosed with cancer, but on his. Uh, Twitter page he, he let everyone know yeah. that was the case um, but there is a, a just giving page no a GoFundMe page yeah. that we have put in the description of this video on Full Time Devils yeah. that is trying to raise money for Mickey uh, as he goes through this uh, battle uh, and hopefully it'll come out uh, stronger on the yeah, other Joe, side Yeah Joe is a winner you know Mickey yeah. I've been privileged to know Mickey from the days I worked at United obviously he'd left when he started with Mew TV we've had some laughs together I can't say some of the stuff We've got to on here because it's before the watershed, but he's a lovely, lovely bloke. He'd do anything for you, you know, and my heart goes out to him, but I know one thing, he's a winner and he will beat this, you know, and I'm hopefully going to see him this weekend. I'll give him a ring tomorrow. He misses everyone here, you know, and he, his love for United and all his other clubs, and he's just a genuine bloke, you know, and, and it always gets the best people, you know what I mean, but this is one battle that Mickey Thomas wins in 90 minutes. Yeah, can I just add to that, Joe? Well, I met Mickey a few times, and one of my first jobs as a reporter, he was one of the first people I had yeah. briefly um, interviewed and, and worked with, and he was just, like you say, just he is just a lovely guy. He makes you feel mm. like one of his mates as soon as you meet him. Yeah. Put me re really at ease when I was doing my job, and it really helped me. So yeah. we wish him all the best. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Go for a couple of quid to that. Go and click on yeah, the link in yeah. the description. Get involved. Get involved and be part of the United family. Um, yeah, gotta love Mickey T. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have a look now at the next game in Manchester United. Uh, fixtures to Chelsea. Yeah. It's the FA Cup. Now the <sighs> debate, the debate in the office that we had us three before the show was, you know, how serious is this FA Cup? Not just for us, but for Chelsea. Now because of the the, the defeat in the Champions League on Tuesday, surely for Ollie this becomes a bit more of a serious game more serious than it than it was the yeah. FA Cup do a bit know, of chance of silverware do you know do you remember when Real Madrid knocked us out when Nani got sent off yeah we had Chelsea didn't we the next game in the yes. FA Cup and we drew Old Trafford and they knocked us out a week later and it's just it's so deflating yeah. I know we're not out of the Champions League yet but it, to yeah. lose to PSG and then get knocked out of the FA Cup and to you know have it, it all to do in the in the Champions League all that sort of positivity we had under Ollie it almost gets sucked out of you so I think it's vital we get a result yeah, yeah he's, he's, I do. He's, he's spot on, Jay. It's like, obviously, you look at Spurs this year, out of two cup competitions within four days, and it all goes flat. Yeah, and it, it all goes very flat on the club. And you know, but it's a big game. It's against one of your rivals. It was a, the draw was fixed. The two balls are under this. Yeah, under, get a bit of the get, on get them, a bit of the that, yeah. you know, Get the warm ones. You know, so it's a Monday night. You know, it's 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 live on TV, and it's a game we've got to win and be positive and keep going. You know. Tuesday was a blip, you know, we got beat by the better team, but we go down to Chelsea, we're confident still, you know, I'm confident we can go to Chelsea and get a result, you know, so bring a Monday night for me. I mean, I don't care what anyone says about top four and all the rest of it. For me, it's about winning trophies. Of course it is. That's what matters. You want to see your team lifting the trophy at the end of the season, not celebrating the fourth place cup. And I think that 
that is obviously our our only chance of silverware, and we've got a good chance of it as well. We've got a decent record of late in the FA Cup. I think on our day we can beat anyone. Chelsea were a shambles. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that Savvy doesn't get his act together and hope he sticks with the tactic of playing on goal low canty out on the wing and leaving it all strange to Jorginho. Man, it? Yeah, I hope it's he sticks with that because it's, it's been a bit of a disaster for him. I'll check him now next season. Who would you, who would you play, who would you play uh, against Chelsea uh, up front? So we still don't know if Marshall or... Yeah, like, so let's just stay. say they will not be fit for the game. It's hypothetical. It's, they won't be fit. But you've got to go and get a result against Chelsea. Judging by what we saw at Paris, uh, against Paris, where Sanchez and Lukaku didn't seem to bring the game to life. Do you, who would you have in your mind? Do you still think you play them? them play Without, what are the options, though? I mean, we've already have discussed Lukaku now. He's completely bereft of confidence. Well, you look at someone young. A youngster. A youngster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greenwood, can you Greenwood. throw Greenwood no, into... No, I think you could, you could take him down there and put him on the bench. I think, I think you, Jay, yeah. our success for the last games under Ole, yeah. we've attacked teams with pace, yeah. not like Mourinho, board sideways and no pace. Yeah. I think if we bring maybe Gomez, Greenwood, put them on the bench, you know, yeah. give him a chance, probably go with a similar line like we had at Arsenal with Romero in goals, I think that'll happen. Because Chelsea haven't gone, it all depends on what happens with Chelsea. He's under pressure now and he's played a week in his team in the FA Cup, Jay, yeah. to what he's played in the league, but he's under pressure now with what happened at City and what happened tonight. Yeah. You know, tonight's a big night for him now. Yeah. You know, he's under right a lot of pressure, the manager. No, he definitely is. I mean, you could even argue, could he play Pogba even further forward? Could Probably you stick a... someone else in midfield and have Pogba yeah. just off the yes. striker? Yeah, good call, I, mean, yeah. I know good he's call. an amazing midfield, but he's, he's almost been a number 10, hasn't he, of late? Yeah. He's that far forward. Yeah. Could you throw in another midfielder, throw in, I don't know, somebody or whoever, and have Pogba pushed up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an, it, I don't know what to do. It, it was an hard question. Uh, get into the comments section if you know what to do about Chelsea. Uh, on the, obviously. <laughs> help us out. <laughs> help, help, <laughs> help, help, <laughs> help. We're clueless. <laughs> do help us out. Uh, are you ready, Jay, for your... Oh, right, yeah, yeah. I've, I've written one here. He's a poet, Jay, by the way. <laughs> poet, yeah. I'm a his answer to... Uh, that poet. Uh, Teddy Hughes. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue. If you don't think Ander Herrera is the best player in the history of association football, then you must be sniffing glue. <laughs> unbelievable. Hey. That was, that, that was un- that one. Unbelievable. That was unbelievable. I think yeah. it deserves a big round Thank of applause you. there. Well done, Jay. Uh, yeah. Get yours in. We'll try and read them out before the end of the show. Uh, we are obviously talking about Manchester United. We've got two <laughs> minutes before Webby's final, uh, well, Webby's final word. Have you got a good one today? No. <laughs> no, no. I've already, I've already, I've already, I've already done this show tonight. Hey, we've got all the answers. This from Russell. No, one. Roses are red, violets are blue. Pogba the virus, Martial the flu. Roses are red, violets are blue. Ollie came in with a fist and the cure. <laughs> It doesn't what? rhyme that what? one. What? Is that, that the best one you could find now? <laughs> hey, no disrespect to Russell. <laughs> that was quite alright. So what do you think of this? Roses are red, violets are blue, Pogba's the virus, Martial's the flu. What did you make of that one? Terrible. What do you think Russell's trying to say yeah. there? Terrible. Uh, uh, Next one, Russell. Yeah, no. Don't give up your day job. Keep trying, Russell. Persevere. <laughs> I'm waiting You'll for them to all come in. They're not, they're not really flying in as much as I thought. Hey. I've got to be honest. Good job we didn't leave just a minute and a half of this section. Uh, anyone else want to get involved? You got another one, Webby? No. I'll give it Jay. I'll give it you. <laughs> I've got one for you. Roses are red, violets are blue. My missus is obsessed with Madame Fellaini and I don't know what to do. Hey! hey. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, a little true. question from Adam T here. Right, we're going to do a little Q&A minute. Uh, Adam T, should we retire the number seven shirt? No. <laughs> we, we have done, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> but did we do that five years ago? Yeah, I think we did. Would you retire the number seven shirt, Webby? No. no. Okay. Well, this is going well. Webby, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's an answer. What do you want to say? Rose no, shouldn't retire. Like, you don't just this retire is, shirts because everyone who played in it isn't playing very well. <clears throat> That's now it works. Ryan says, Roses are red, violets are blue. Ollie's on the wheel. Ollie is the real deal. <laughs> I'll tell you I'll what. Tell you what there's some poor do, do you know what? Tonight, hey. Does it Are you making these up as you go along? Because there's nothing on your God. screen. I You're swear panicking. To God. I'm not hey. panicking. <laughs> Here we go. Russell again. <clears throat> Roses are red, violets are blue. Webby's a legend. <laughs> and Jay don't know you. <laughs> hey, 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 well done, Russell. Well done, Russell. Pulled out of back, lad. Well 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 out the back. Like that one. Roses, roses are red, violets are blue. Jones is a clown, smaller than his two. Yeah, that's, that's from Mick. That, Mike. That's... Right, there's supposed to be nice ones. Webby, what is your final word this week? Final word is get behind the boys. Obviously, a disappointing result on Tuesday. We, we move on to Stamford Bridge. Uh, 
How many reds are going to be there? Seven. Yeah, we've got a, it's got the full end. It, and they've not be, done an Arsenal, have they? No, it's going to be loud and proud, you know, get behind the boys, get behind Ole. Bit of a blip Tuesday, but we're still there and we're still playing some great football after what we've seen for five years. So come on, you reds. Jay, yes. thank you very much for Thanks being for involved in the show. <coughs> Webby as well, thank Cheers, you. Up. We've been the Full Time Devils. Uh, subscribe to Full Time Devils and download the podcast. And Jimmy's up next from Amazon's and some David Bowie. <laughs> 